You threw away the $1,500 watch my father gave me for my birthday? Christopher never took off the watch that his father gifted him. I said, Yes, I threw it in the trash, and I will do it again. Experiencing even more rage, Christopher said, You're out of your mind? Why would you do that? Are you crazy? I'm 29 years old, and although I go by Ellie, my name is Eleanor. I guess you could look at it that way. I married Christopher a year ago, and regrettably, we now reside with my in-laws. My father-in-law is always criticizing me, and never misses an opportunity to make fun of me. You're not even good at making tea. He usually brags. It seems like a nightmare every day, and I wish I could escape from this bitter reality. Christopher and I reunited during our reunion, having first met in high school. We began dating after he came clean and said he had always loved me. A year ago, we were married. I was ecstatic, utterly enamored with Christopher, and eager for our future together. I thought that I would be properly taken care of and would form a great family as long as he was with me. I see now how foolish such ideas were. I moved in with Christopher and his folks after we were married. My father-in-law was a terribly tormented and traditional man, as I quickly found out. He was one of those sexists who would never think to brew his own tea. Christopher told me of a time when his father threw a dish at his mother for defying him and told her it was improper for a woman to do so. This stunned me, and at first, I didn't think it was real, but it was. I also discovered that my father-in-law held prejudice toward foreigners. Despite my employment as a skilled English and Japanese interpreter, he was quite judgmental of me as an immigrant. Maybe it wasn't only because I was a foreigner. Maybe he didn't think highly of me right away. Nevertheless, he spoke poorly of me and blamed me for everything. I adore my profession as an interpreter since it's one where my abilities are genuinely useful. The majority of my work was done from home translating meetings and the like, while certain tasks needed field work. Because I was proud of the job I did, I found my father-in-law's continual insults to be annoying. Why do you hate someone just because they speak English or are from another country? Was a common thought I would have. One afternoon, Christopher and I prepared a special lunch for my father-in-law. I wanted to blend my own culinary style with traditional Japanese dishes to create something that honored both our backgrounds. I hoped this gesture would show my respect for their culture and my desire to be a part of their family. At the time of dinner, I greeted him warmly and served the meal with a hopeful heart. As we sat down, I could feel his scrutinizing gaze. When he finally spoke, his words cut through the air like a cold wind. I see you've added some of your own flair to the dishes, he said, his voice laced with disapproval. I don't understand why you can't stick to traditional Japanese food. It's not how we do things here. I felt a pang of hurt, but tried to maintain my composure. I wanted to create something special for you. I thought blending my own style with traditional Japanese cuisine might bring something new and enjoyable. His response, however, was unyielding. In Japan, we have a long history and culture that we should respect. Foreigners often don't understand this. The sting of his words was like a sharp needle in my heart. I knew Christopher had always tried to help me fit in, but his father's criticisms felt like an insurmountable barrier. Christopher, clearly upset, spoke up in my defense. Dad, Eleanor is trying her best to fit in and embrace our traditions. It's not fair to criticize her for bringing a bit of her own background into it. We should appreciate her efforts and welcome her differences. I was grateful for Christopher's support, but I could see the frustration in his eyes. After the meal, I retreated to the kitchen, my heart heavy with disappointment. I tried to hold back my tears, but they came anyway. Christopher found me and wrapped his arms around me, 
offering comfort and understanding. I'm sorry, Eleanor, he said softly. My father can be very set in his ways, but I appreciate everything you've done, and I love you for it. That evening, Christopher decided to confront his father. I didn't know what to expect, but I hoped it would lead to some understanding. Though I knew it was useless to make him understand since he didn't want to hear anything about it, still I hoped he would somehow make it less of a deal. He was angry because his son had married an English-speaking immigrant, even though he detested both English and other nations. He has a habit of mumbling, I can't stand foreigners. I want to hide my ears every time I hear him. He thinks that since I'm foreign, I won't be skilled at making suitable meals or tea ceremonies. Having lived in Japan, though, I have a great respect for Japanese culture. I've even tried to become familiar with Japanese traditions. I've lived in Japan, and I love the country, even though I'm from somewhere else. I said to my father-in-law, It is shameful how you have behaved. Sorry? Who feels ashamed? He shot back. He should be ashamed, in my opinion, for such callous words, just because I'm not from his native nation. I felt upset by what he said, but I said nothing. He talked horribly about me, but he was still Christopher's father, so I should put up with it, I reasoned. At first, I thought that despite his frowns and unwillingness to get to know me, he would eventually grow to like me, even though he didn't like me right now. His nasty and insulting remarks were a common occurrence due to his bias. Saying things like, I'm going to teach you to be Japanese the right way, he would delegate home tasks to me, including cleaning and even giving me shoulder massages. My father-in-law had tricked us into moving in with them because he secretly intended to ruin my life, which made me unhappy. It appeared that way, at least. I knew I would never really get him and even though my mother-in-law says she's sorry about his actions, she can't make him behave differently. I pitied her, and hated him for believing he could manipulate and hurt people. Christopher was always so busy at business and on the road that I longed to tell him the truth about his parents. I didn't want to worsen his concerns. I tried talking to my mother-in-law one day about how hurtful my father-in-law's remarks are, but it turned out that she's more tired of him than me. She told me that even if she was native Japanese, she still had to go through such remarks. At this point, it's not an issue of being a foreigner. Hey, hurry up, it's time to make lunch. Since I work from home, I frequently spend the entire day there. Because of how difficult it may be to leave meetings at predetermined times, I am not able to take breaks from my job whenever I choose. My father-in-law had other ideas for a late lunch, but I opted to eat it alone. Despite the fact that I wasn't done with my task yet, he insisted on me hurrying. I attempted to clarify, saying, I need to work and would like to have lunch on my own schedule. He said coldly, This English-speaking job isn't suitable for you. Are you unaware that you should abide by your in-law's wishes? This makes sense. Because they are unable to comprehend these things, immigrants are really unpleasant. His angry remarks and irrational demands were excruciating. He enjoyed making things tough for me and wanted me to make lunch right away. The thing that bothered me the most was that his actions prevented me from focusing on my work. His demands then escalated much further. He put ridiculous regulations on me, including cleaning the room every morning and keeping me seated at lunch until everyone had eaten. Additionally, he would enter my room and stop me in my work. I can't stand hearing English right now. It was quite difficult for me when I was subjected to severe criticism outside of my room. My father-in-law's remarks and behaviors drove me to a breaking point, especially when they began to interfere with my work. I would have to risk losing my important work if I didn't deal with it, and my mother-in-law's frequent jabs were breaking me. It was more than I could bear. I adore Christopher, therefore I was ecstatic to be his wife. In my mind, sticking by his side would be sufficient, even in difficult situations. 
However, I was wrong. This was not how I could live with my father-in-law any longer. I cried because I was in so much agony and was so miserable. I made the decision to talk to Christopher about everything that night. Tears filled my eyes as I talked about my experience. Christopher apologized many times after being extremely shocked. I truly apologize. I was unaware of it. Ellie, I swear I'll make you happy, he said. After that, Christopher told my in-laws what I was going through, which infuriated them. He suggested that we move out. Let's get our own apartment, Ellie. My parents don't have to live with us. Together, let's purchase an apartment and move in. Are you certain? I inquired about how much his parents mean to him. Without a doubt, it seems like the right choice for us moving ahead, he said pulling me close in his embrace. I was ecstatic. I received the impression that there was now some optimism emerging from the shadows. I was happy that I had married Christopher and felt a great feeling of security. I never saw my in-laws again after we moved out of his parents' home. My father-in-law ceased pestering me once Christopher addressed him about how he had treated me, and things returned to a calm routine. I was discovering how much I had previously taken for granted while I was basking in the freedom and joy of concentrating on my career and personal life. I became pregnant and found out a year later. Christopher was thrilled and my parents appeared to be as well. Christopher seems to have told my in-laws the news. I tried to seem happy and smile, but my heart was heavy. A year had gone by since that traumatic event, but my father-in-law's acts still made me feel uncomfortable. Just because we're having a baby doesn't mean you have to see my parents. Christopher comforted me. Anything that might irritate you is what I want to avoid. You and the baby are the most crucial things, Ellie. I was informed of the news by Christopher, and the delivery went well. We had a healthy baby girl, and as her little fingers closed around mine, I felt like the suffering had been worthwhile. Christopher inquired whether it would be okay if his parents saw her, his look uncertain. He wanted them to see their granddaughter because he had told them about her safe arrival and they had been ecstatic. He went on. I apologize. You don't need to view them, as I know I stated. I told Christopher not to worry. I am aware of how you are feeling. Your desire for your daughter to meet your parents makes sense. I understand that my father-in-law cares about you, despite the fact that he injured me. I understand how important they are to you. Therefore, I want to grant your request. I hope he's had time to think back on what occurred since it's been a year. Yeah, that was a year ago, and people change, said Christopher with a broad smile. Let's maintain our optimism. Christopher, our daughter and I, went to my in-law's house the day after we were discharged from the hospital. I was feeling a little nervous because I hadn't seen my father-in-law since then. My in-laws smiled to meet us when we got to their place. I felt a mixture of relief and happiness for having brought my granddaughter along as I noticed my father-in-law looking at his grandchild. Christopher was happy too, and it was a big relief that my father-in-law refrained from saying anything snarky. I was appreciative since I thought my father-in-law must sincerely repent of his previous deeds. Then he gave me a box, packaged like a present, and said, this is a gift to celebrate the birth of your child. The watch cost $1,500. The generous gift and the watch's price took me aback. I had never seen one that expensive. Beside me, my mother-in-law's eyes widened in surprise as well. Don't be shocked, my father-in-law said. It's my way of saying thank you for allowing me to see my grandchild. I was actually thrilled and thought that maybe, for the first time, my father-in-law and I were starting to understand one another, even if I was first astonished. The idea of winning his approval made my heart burst with happiness.
Christopher and I excitedly unwrapped the present to commemorate our new baby as soon as we arrived home. We were shocked to see that the watch didn't appear like your average wristwatch, though. We had anticipated something considerably more lavish for a $1,500 watch. We questioned the watch's high price, but because my father-in-law had given it to us, we decided to put it on the living room shelf and move on from the issue. Subsequently, my father-in-law called back. He has been phoning us a lot ever since we got the watch. His call started off as requests for updates about his grandkids, but as he did a year before, he quickly started making derogatory and accusatory statements about me. He would not stop calling, even when I attempted to ignore him. I began to fear that he could have doubts about me. Around this time last year, I had come to terms with the fact that he didn't truly like me and was discouraged by his lack of change. My father-in-law's constant pleading got to be too much to handle. At times, he would even come to my house if I didn't respond. I was stuck, and all I could do was answer his calls. The phone rang many times a day, and each time I answered, he would insult me with nasty remarks. I was psychologically and physically exhausted from the continual stress of raising my child, handling work, and interacting with my father-in-law. I would often cry because I was in such terrible pain. I had assumed that my father-in-law's harassment of me would stop once I moved out, with remarks like, do immigrants only clean once a week? And, you've only had Japanese food for two days this week, he started to make specific complaints. For this reason, immigrants are bad people. It was unnerving that his assessments were strangely enough correct. Christopher told me he wasn't giving his father any information when I asked him if he was. Initially, I believed it may be a coincidence, but my father-in-law started making more regular and accurate remarks. I thought I was going crazy because I was so scared. I got shivers from his statements because of how detailed they were. I was overcome with panic as I attempted to make sense of what was occurring and understand how serious it was. I could not have imagined the circumstances, and it made my body tremble violently. I was overcome with a deep desire to shield my sleeping infant. My body shook, but I knew I had to do something. Christopher brought the watch his father had given us for the birth of our baby when he arrived home from work that evening. He appeared enraged. You discarded the $1,500 watch that my father gifted us? I gave a nod. Yes, I disposed of it in the trash, and I would do it once more. Christopher grew more irate. You're unbelievable. Do you think you're crazy? You might think that, but I'm not the problem here, I retorted coolly. Allow me to demonstrate for you. I gestured to the watch's little black dot. Press this button. Christopher followed the instructions, and his countenance altered when he saw something out of the ordinary. What's this? he inquired. It didn't turn out to be a reset button, despite my suspicions. It isn't a button. Take a closer look, I commanded. Christopher's face turned paler as he studied the area. A covert camera was present. Christopher looked shocked. A camera that had been recording us for a while had been installed in the watch. Because of this covert monitoring, my father-in-law had been keeping tabs on our every step and was even aware of the specifics of our meals. The things that my father-in-law did appalled me. I had the watch professionally examined and debugged to ensure it was all his fault. Christopher's eyes hardened with resolve, but first, he was paralyzed in astonishment. Ellie, I apologize sincerely. I can't believe I've made you go through this once more. Christopher remarked, I will never be able to forgive my father for this. Christopher and I left our kid with my parents the following day and traveled to my in-law's place. Christopher went over to my father-in-law and held the watch in front of him. Do you know why we are here, Dad? 
Christopher demanded, rage visible in his eyes. The evident wrath on Christopher's face caused my father-in-law's to stiffen somewhat. What are you talking about? was his vague reply. What do you mean, what am I talking about? Christopher pushed. You handed her a wristwatch that was equipped with a wiretap and a concealed camera. However, my father-in-law argued, saying, I have no idea what you're talking about. Thus, why did it cost $1,500? I was unaware that was the case. My rage was further increased by his refusal to acknowledge his transgression. Christopher and I excitedly unwrapped the present to commemorate our new baby as soon as we arrived home. We were shocked to see that the watch didn't appear like your average wristwatch, though. We had anticipated something considerably more lavish for a $1,500 watch. We questioned the watch's high price, but because my father-in-law had given it to us, we decided to put it on the living room shelf and move on from the issue. Subsequently, my father-in-law called back. He has been phoning us a lot ever since we got the watch. His call started off as requests for updates about his grandkids, but as he did a year before, he quickly started making derogatory and accusatory statements about me. He would not stop calling, even when I attempted to ignore him. I began to fear that he could have doubts about me. Around this time last year, I had come to terms with the fact that he didn't truly like me and was discouraged by his lack of change. My father-in-law's constant pleading got to be too much to handle. At times, he would even come to my house if I didn't respond. I was stuck, and all I could do was answer his calls. The phone rang many times a day, and each time I answered, he would insult me with nasty remarks. I was psychologically and physically exhausted from the continual stress of raising my child, handling work and interacting with my father-in-law. I would often cry because I was in such terrible pain. I had assumed that my father-in-law's harassment of me would stop once I moved out, with remarks like, do immigrants only clean once a week? And, you've only had Japanese food for two days this week, he started to make specific complaints. For this reason, immigrants are bad people. It was unnerving that his assessments were strangely enough correct. Christopher told me he wasn't giving his father any information when I asked him if he was. Initially, I believed it may be a coincidence, but my father-in-law started making more regular and accurate remarks. I thought I was going crazy because I was so scared. I got shivers from his statements because of how detailed they were. I was overcome with panic as I attempted to make sense of what was occurring and understand how serious it was. I could not have imagined the circumstances, and it made my body tremble violently. I was overcome with a deep desire to shield my sleeping infant. My body shook, but I knew I had to do something. Christopher brought the watch his father had given us for the birth of our baby when he arrived home from work that evening. He appeared enraged. You discarded the $1,500 watch that my father gifted us? I gave a nod. Yes, I disposed of it in the trash, and I would do it once more. Christopher grew more irate. You're unbelievable. Do you think you're crazy? You might think that, but I'm not the problem here, I retorted coolly. Allow me to demonstrate for you. I gestured to the watch's little black dot. Press this button. Christopher followed the instructions, and his countenance altered when he saw something out of the ordinary. What's this? he inquired. It didn't turn out to be a reset button, despite my suspicions. It isn't a button. Take a closer look, I commanded. Christopher's face turned paler as he studied the area. A covert camera was present. Christopher looked shocked. A camera that had been recording us for a while had been installed in the watch. Because of this covert monitoring, my father-in-law had been keeping tabs on our every step and was even aware of the specifics of our meals. 
the things that my father-in-law did appalled me. I had the watch professionally examined and debugged to ensure it was all his fault. Christopher's eyes hardened with resolve, but first, he was paralyzed in astonishment. Ellie, I apologize sincerely. I can't believe I've made you go through this once more. Christopher remarked, I will never be able to forgive my father for this. Christopher and I left our kid with my parents the following day and traveled to my in-law's place. Christopher went over to my father-in-law and held the watch in front of him. Do you know why we are here, Dad? Christopher demanded, rage visible in his eyes. The evident wrath on Christopher's face caused my father-in-law's to stiffen somewhat. What are you talking about? was his vague reply. What do you mean, what am I talking about? Christopher pushed. You handed her a wristwatch that was equipped with a wiretap and a concealed camera. However, my father-in-law argued, saying, I have no idea what you're talking about. Thus, why did it cost $1,500? I was unaware that was the case. My rage was further increased by his refusal to acknowledge his transgression. Do you possess any evidence? Is there any proof that I did this? My father-in-law smirked and taunted. I'm sorry, but there isn't any proof. But you'll pay for shattering my heart. That expense will be borne by you. Suddenly, my mother-in-law, who had not spoken a word, spoke. Because I am ending our divorce. How come? What topic are you discussing? While not taking it seriously, my father-in-law inquired, seeming slightly astonished. That was significant since my mother-in-law had blindly followed his direction throughout her life. Christopher said, I told my mother what my father did. I checked your room after that. What? My father-in-law seemed more and more disturbed than he had previously. My mother-in-law went on. I wanted to think it was a fake too, but taking pictures and listening in on people is illegal. I discovered films of Christopher's residence and his family in your room. It still amazes me that you accomplished this. The rage on my father-in-law's face intensified. I also asked my mother to find receipts for that watch, continued Christopher. The watch order paperwork and receipts were then shown to him. This watch is handmade to order. Did you order it with a wiretap and hidden camera? Here, I have concrete evidence. Upon realizing that he could not continue to deny it, my father-in-law came clean. I chose to keep an eye on Ellie's actions via the camera because I was unable to address her head-on, he said. At this, everyone in the room became quite angry, and there was a general feeling of frustration. My mother-in-law divorced my father-in-law after learning about this. In addition to being forced to pay alimony, he faced eviction, since her parents had given them the house. He currently resides alone in a modest apartment. For years, my mother-in-law had put up with my father-in-law's irrational requests, thinking it was all for Christopher's benefit. Her marriage had ensnared her, and there was no way out. But witnessing me suffer made her understand that she ought to have shielded me, and that's what ultimately gave her the confidence to walk away from him. With her husband no longer in the picture, my mother-in-law leads a comfortable and easy-going existence. Christopher has severed his relationship with his father, so nobody is left to bring us problems. With our kid, Christopher and I have a really happy home. Christopher, who used to travel frequently for work, changed careers to allow him to spend more time with his family. I look forward to our time together more than before. Our friendship has become deeper, and our communication has strengthened after the event with my father-in-law. I've never been happier than I am right now. Everybody finds happiness in different ways, but I value the one I have. Giving up one's pleasure to ensure the happiness of another is wrong.